Hey folks, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over Hooke's Law. So let's get started. So we'll start by considering this specific example of a mass on the end of a spring, which is fixed at the top here. And the mass will be able to oscillate up and down with simple harmonic motion when you extend the mass downwards away from its equilibrium position. So it says that the spring will oscillate up and down around an equilibrium position under the influence of an unbalanced force. So if you apply an unbalanced force downwards on this mass by pulling it down and then you let it go, the ball is going to oscillate up and down, and that's because the spring will stretch and compress. It then says the size and direction of the restoring force on the spring, in this case, is given by F equals minus KY, where F is the restoring force or unbalanced force on the spring measured in newtons, K is the spring constant measured in newtons per metre, and Y is the displacement of the spring from its equilibrium position measured in metres. And this relationship is what we call Hooke's Law, which tells us that the unbalanced force is directly proportional to the displacement of the object undergoing SHM, but in the opposite direction. And you should note that the negative sign here shows that the direction of the force vector is always opposite to the displacement vector Y. So that's why we have this negative sign in the equation. It tells us about the force and the displacement acting in opposite directions. Now, one last thing to point out is is that you might see this equation written in a slightly different way. You might see it written as F equals minus KX instead of minus KY. And that's because if the object was moving horizontally, i.e. from left to right and then from right to left and so on, then it would make more sense to talk about the displacement being X rather than Y. So in this case, we were talking about the ball moving up and down, i.e. in the Y direction. So that's why we've used Y for displacement here. But if the object is moving horizontally, then you could equally just use X here. Now I'm just going to show you a quick animation to help you understand this. So here we have a spring which is fixed at one end and then attached to this lever here which can pull it and compress it. And right now I'm using a spring with a spring constant K of 200 newtons per meter. So to investigate Hooke's law, what you could do is change the applied force to this spring and then note down the corresponding displacement value of the spring. And then you could plot this on a graph of displacement against force and then find the gradient from your graph, which I'll show you in a minute, but you'll see here if I change the applied force, let's say in steps of 10 newtons, then you can see how that changes the displacement of the spring from its equilibrium position. So if I went up every 10 newtons, say, and then took down the value of the displacement, I could then plot those values on a graph. So with an applied force of 10 newtons, you can see my displacement of 0.05 meters. If I then increase it to 20 newtons, you can see I now have a displacement of 0.1 meters. So the two values here, the displacement and the force, should be directly proportional. And remember that was from our definition of simple harmonic motion. So again, you should see increasing up to 30 newtons, it goes to 0.15 meters. And then up to 40 newtons, you should see it at 0.2 meters and so on. Now the applied force here, that is not the restoring force or the unbalanced force. That is the force that is causing the spring to stretch here. But if I click this one here called spring force, that shows you that it's got the same magnitude as the applied force here, but it just acts in the opposite direction to try and make the spring move back towards its equilibrium position. Now I did say earlier you can plot this on a graph, so if you look at this graph here, we've got applied force on the y-axis against displacement on the x-axis, and if you were to plot a graph, you would see this directly proportional line here. Now the reason we have a line going backwards is because we could also look at what happens when the spring moves back the way, i.e. in this direction. So if I move the displacement back and forth in this negative region, you can see the dot moving along that line of best fit there. But I was showing you what was going to happen for the positive values, so if you were to stretch the spring rather than compress it which would be this positive quadrant here. Now, the last thing to point out is that if you plot this graph of force against displacement and then take the gradient of your line of best fit, then you'll be left with the spring constant. And that's because, remember, we can say F equals minus KY, or in this case, because the spring is moving horizontally, I could use F equals minus KX. And that means that my Y axis will be the force F, my X axis will be the displacement X, and therefore, if I do the change in Y over the change in X, I'll be left with a constant value, which is the gradient, which is the spring constant K. That's all for this video, folks. Thanks for watching. If you made it to the end, I really appreciate it. Make sure to give the video one of these, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.